Welcome back to ECE 320A. Remember, we're in Unit 4, which means you have homework number 4 to finish at the end of Unit 4, and exam number 2 will be coming at the end or after Unit number 5. In this video, what we want to do is derive the differential equations for the circuit in problem 1231. Here is the circuit that's given to us. And in fact, this particular problem, note that before t equals zero, this current source is just circulating on the left, and we're assuming there's no energy stored in the inductor or the capacitor. When we throw the switch open at time t equals zero, when we do throw that switch open, then this source, this current source, starts being introduced into this combination of R, L, and C. And in general, then we can, would start thinking about what we need to do relative to deriving the governing equations for this particular circuit. But in this particular problem, they want us to find equations, the governing differential equations in terms of the node voltages. One of our nodes is sitting right here, and the second node is sitting right there, and we can then have node voltages as associated with each of those nodes. We then want our eventual differential equations, or in this case, integral differential equations, since we will probably have an integrator involved since we're wanting the voltage across an inductor, typically we would write these equations in terms of inductor currents and capacitor voltages. But in this particular problem, they say derive the equations in terms of the two node voltages, V sub 1 of T and V sub 2 of T. Using our strategy or way of thinking up to this point, we can say that for T greater than or equal to zero, we can look at that circuit and we can see that two energy storage elements are involved or present. And those are in the form of one inductor and one capacitor. That now implies that we should be finding a second order differential equation, or, and now you can tell me, that we should be expecting two first order differential equations that would be coupled to one another by means of the inductor current and capacitor voltage. But now that we have two energy storage devices, we would expect to be finding then a second order differential equation or two first order. Again, we can, if we're buying time, if somebody's interviewing us and they say, find the integral differential equation for this RLC circuit, you go, okay, well, I know Eli and ICE or the current voltage relationships for the inductor and capacitor. And those are going to then inform my analysis or my ability to write the equations that govern the dynamic behavior of this circuit. And from what we know, it's usually best to write these governing equations in terms of currents and voltages and which current and which voltage. Well, it's the variables that are in the differential relationship of these current voltage relationships. The inductor current is what is in the derivative term of Eli, or it's actually the last variable in Eli, the voltage is the last variable in ICE, and as we've 
mentioned before, that's usually what you want to focus on. But in this particular problem, they said write the equations that govern the dynamics in terms of v sub 1 of t and v sub 2 of t. So we may not end up with these nice first order differential equations that are coupled. That being said, let's go ahead and look at this. And if we're wanting node voltages, that typically says that we want to write KCL equations. Let's just go ahead and label these two nodes. I have them highlighted. I have a yellow node and a blue node. Let's just call this particular node A. And let's now write the KCL equation at node A. And here I can say that I have the inductor current leaving. I have the resistor current leaving, but that's also the same as that capacitor current. I sub R is the same as I sub C. And what's coming into node A is I sub G, and that's now my KCL equation at node A. Writing then KCL at node A says that I sub G of T, my source, my current source, is equal to I sub L of T plus I sub C of T. And we can actually replace I sub C or rewrite that in terms of one of these node voltages because that now is going to be possible because of ICE so that this equation can be rewritten in an equivalent way and now it will contain some dynamics because of the differential relationship between current and voltage in the capacitor. I sub G is now I sub L of T plus C dV sub C dT. And typically we might just stop at that particular point with one of our first order differential equations and then try to find a second first order differential equation that's independent of this one. And that would probably be then another KCL equation. But in this case, they're forcing our hand and they're saying, oh, we actually want you to write it in terms of V sub 1 and V sub 2. And in this particular case, V sub C is one of those. That's V sub 2. And I sub L will be able to get rid of that from Eli. Eli says that V sub 1 of T, or the inductor voltage, is equal to L D I sub L of T dT. Or we can now solve that for I sub L of T by means of an integral. So now we have 1 over L, the integral of V sub 1 of tau d tau, and that's now the relationship that we will use to remove the inductor current in this first KCL equation. Replacing I sub L then with this integral relationship from 0 minus up to T, we now have our first equation which says I sub G of T is equal to 1 over L integral 0 minus to T V sub 1 of tau D tau plus C D V sub 2 of T D T. That's now one of our governing equations. It's an integral differential equation containing V sub 1 and V sub 2. It's coupled. We now need to find a second equation that couples V1 and V sub 2, and it also contains some dynamic relationships between V sub 1 and V sub 2. And in this particular case, since we're sort of mixing state variables, or we're not even using one of the state variables, we're using the inductor voltage. So now let's try to find a way of connecting these two node voltages, and that's pretty easy by writing a KVL equation around this rightmost mesh. So now if we simply call 
not sure which color to use, but let's just say that we now are going to write the equation around that mesh B. And in so doing, now we have a KVL equation around B, which says that we now have minus. We're going in the way that we've defined our voltages. We're going into the negative terminal of our inductor voltage, minus V1 of T plus V sub R of T plus V sub C of T. And those voltages then sum to zero. We're okay with V sub C, that's just V sub 2. We need to get rid of V sub R or write it in terms of V1 and V2. But we know that V sub R by Ohm's law is just R times the current through that resistor. And the current through that resistor, I sub R, is the same as I sub C. And we can write I sub C from ICE in terms of V sub 2 of T. Let's then do that. We'll leave V sub 1 alone. We now have minus V1 of T plus R, but now we, that's times I sub R, but I sub R is I sub C, which is C dV sub C, but V sub C is V sub 2 plus V sub 2 of T equaling 0. Again, what we're using here is the fact that I sub R of T is equal to I sub C of T, and I sub C of T from ICE allows us now to write this second governing relationship between V sub 1 and V sub 2, or couple the set of equations to couple this boxed equation with that boxed equation, and now we have our differential equations associated with that RLC circuit.